So let's get down to it because cybercrime very obviously poses one of the greatest threats to the world's financial institutions. And the Swift Institute chose to make that the subject of this year's student challenge, posing the question, how would they raise the level of cybersecurity for applications and or data from sophisticated attacks? Well, predictably, it was a suitably tough test, but one our talented student challenge competitors were highly focused on tackling successfully. So how did they do? Well, let's now take a, take a look now, I should say, let's look now at a very short film that's going to give us a flavour of how those young people set about doing the toughest thing of all, which was impressing the judges. Each bank would submit their information on our system, and once the information is reconciled, it would then be posted as the first block in the chain. This information would then be available to each buy-side firm that is registered on our platform. No more need for redundant chats, no more extra phone calls. All the information is reaching all interested parties with the click of a mouse. Our solution is not only superior to the current process, but its implementation would also be beneficial to all stakeholders involved. Even smaller players, if registered to our platform, would have access to deals. Regulators would embrace the enhanced access and see it as bringing greater inclusion and equality to financial markets. Another advantage of using blockchain regulators are likely to embrace is the inherent security and traceability of the entire process. As you can see, our solution streamlines an old process that is layered with painful redundancies. My idea is a multi-layer dynamical system inspired by our immune system. A malware or a virus um, can attack a single computer, replicate and spread to a network. Here, my proposed uh, solution makes an in silico antibody, which is a mathematical function, then produces a set of mathematical functions as a digital vaccine to protect other computers in the network. According to Cybersecurity Ventures, the world is projected to lose almost $6 trillion in 2021, and this is more than Japan's GDP, the third richest country in the world. It is actually not mandatory for banking and financial market professionals to participate in initial cybersecurity training, leaving the door wide open for cyber threats. Which leads us to an absence of a uniform standard procedure which banks could follow from a proactive or a reactive standpoint. This is a concern, since without a standard procedure, certain institutions may become weak links in this increasingly interconnected world. Destroying silos could prevent a cyber risk catastrophe on the scale of the housing crisis in 2008. A cyber awareness course costs less than 100 US dollars per person. The simple course can allow an employee to have the most basic cyber awareness. A cyber attack drill will cost less than 5,000 US dollars per department compared to the risk it poses in millions. We decided to focus our solution on the issue of phishing. And you might ask, why phishing? Only uneducated, careless, or gullible people fall for that. It's clear to know when someone's trying to ask for my money. And yes, this is a common perception. However, in today's reality, researchers at the University of San Diego have said that phishing is a top 2020 cybersecurity threat because of its growing sophistication. Cognitive computing is a technology that's able to mimic human behavior. Um, therefore, it's able to note which emails are going to be the most enticing to a user to open. By automating this process, this reporting process, there's more data to make the models out there strong. Okay, so that's the parade of talent, and I'm delighted to announce that the judges chose the student we saw last there in that roundup of the entries, Isabel Aldalba. She won for her solution veracity, so big congratulations to her. And their congratulations, we're very pleased to can pass on personally, because Isabel joins us now along with one of her winning teammates, Kevin Liu, and also with us is Nancy Murphy, Assistant Director of the SWIFT Institute. Good evening or good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. <laughs> Hello, guys, and welcome to Cybos TV. It's wonderful to have you here on our last day. OK, and Isabel and Kevin, congratulations, because the competition was, feel that was tough, but you triumphed through that field, so well done. But look, it's a really impressive idea that you came, came up with. So what was the inspiration behind it? These things don't just happen just like that. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, honestly, we wanted to... Uh capitalize on the fact that the challenge really wanted us to be creative in how we created a solution and we weren't limited to doing something technical with our solution. So it also worked out that our team happened to be full of different people from different majors. And I'm actually a cybersecurity engineering major. 
Yep, and I'm an information systems major. Um, we had someone who was a computer science major. And so uh, taking all of our backgrounds, we wanted to mesh them together. We had the education idea um, from a course that I took last fall where there was a competition and the team that won really focused on how can we change the current training systems. That was not my team. <laughs> so I wanted to learn from that experience and apply that to this competition. Um, and we also, originally, we were going to just say, hey, you know, we just need new training programs. Um, but after interviewing professors at our school, we realized that issue was making these training programs interesting for employees. Then we had to figure out our technical part. Um, and we figured that out by interviewing people we knew that were in the banking industry. Um, and that's how we developed that. We also did our own research. I attended a conference over the summer, um, Spark and AI Summit, where I learned about federated learning. Um, and Kevin learned uh, more about cognitive computing through a book called uh, Fishing Dark Waters, Defensive and Defensive Sides of Malicious Emails. Um, and yeah, so that's basically the genesis. I'll let Kevin answer your next question. <laughs> well, guys, uh, cybersecurity is such a hot topic at the moment that grows ever more important within this in industry and elsewhere with every added year. What do you guys think are the weakest points in modern cybersecurity? I think we definitely think that the uh, weakest point of cybersecurity are definitely humans themselves. I think part of it is definitely because we're just, we're emotional beings and we all go through different experiences in life and all our backgrounds are also different. And this will definitely have an impact on how we make decisions, uh, whether it be in life or also online. And we're always going to make some sort of mistakes too, just because that's how humans are, I think. And cyber criminals have also uh, been more, become more advanced at how they attack people. And I think that they're starting to catch on and starting to abuse these things about our uh, human nature. And guys, are you looking to develop this proposal? And what are the chances of it being taken up by the industry? Because as Johnny said, cybersecurity is such a hot button issue, and especially now with this backdrop of the pandemic. So how we developed our solution was we, there's like a lot of mini solutions within it. And how we see it is we hope that companies within the industry um, are it's feasible enough so that they can implement it by just picking and choosing what works for them, because each firm is different in their capacity and their culture. And so we hope that it's open in its flexibility in terms of developing it further. Um, we are interested in researching more on the fields of cognitive computing, cloud and federated learning and just machine learning. Um, and if there were any firms or companies that wanted to approach us to get more of our input, we would be happy to speak with them and share what we know. Um, but again, we're students and there's so much left for us to learn. And Nancy, I can see you there sat looking proud as punch, uh, to use a British term. Uh, but talk us, talk us through why the student challenge is so important for SWIFT and the financial community. You know, Johnny, the financial community is rapidly evolving. It's changing every day. And with it, though, comes so many more challenges. Um, and it's really important to address, to try to, um, to combat those challenges with reaching with new ideas and new insights. And one of the things that the Swift Institute Student Challenge does is it reaches into the student community because they have fresh insights and new ideas. Their generation is, they grew up with smartphones in their pockets and, and they use the technology in different ways and they see how people interact in different ways and reaching out to them to, to, to solve the challenges that, that they're in. They see things in different ways. They know the human behavior of, of what they see in their generation. It, it is different than my generation. Um, and we started the challenge, this is now our fifth year, um, to, to tap into that, to, to benefit the community. Okay. They're not weighted down with experiences and processes and procedures and they're open-minded. And we need that in order to survive and succeed in the future. Absolutely. But look, Nancy, we have to leave it there. Thank you so much for talking to us. And a big congratulations to the winners there, Isabel and Kevin. We wish, wish you the best of luck going forward into the future.